between the first, there's a lot of pressure on. Anyway, let's pray. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your wonderful mercies and your kind uh, compassion that you have upon us. Father, as we uh, look at certain things which are in our world, we ask that you be with us and help us to understand your wonderful, these, uh, uh, to understand these things so that we can know your wonderful kindness. Precious Lord, Father, we ask for your, your mercy and your grace in the same issue. Hallelujah. Okay, I pray that Father helps us to understand the dangers that we're in and that he's able to give me the ability to lay out some of these things that we can understand. And I continue to ask the Father to be with us in the name of sure. So, what I'm going to talk about mainly is about CERN. It's a bit of a gate other than just a um, item laden the earth with their own spiel of how they think things are supposed to look. And it's also a plan to open a gateway. For those who don't know me, my name is Claire Christie. Right, CERN, which is uh, a Council of European Research for, for, uh, nu for Nuclear, or pronounced uh, Consal European Polar Research Nuclear. About the 1950s when it came around. An actual fact, it came about in 1954, 29th of, 8th of September. Now, prior to that, um, about four months prior to that, another organisation, which some of you who know, started up. Any guesses at who that might be? Or what that organization might be? No, but you're close, you're close. They're not so visual as the EEC. They're called the Bilderberg Group, the Newton So this is the largest machine, as you can see on our on the screen here. The largest um, machine in the world, located on the border of France and Switzerland. The Chinese, they're planning a large one, there's also another large one, which is, which is being again planned. So it straddles the border, it's about, 50, about built, it cost them about 9 billion pound. It's at the depth of 550 575 feet, which is approximately 175 meters below ground. The tunnel complex is, does anyone know how long? 17 miles long, or 27 kilometers. The scientists involved in the project say that a laboratory was built on the ground um, <coughs> because the earth crust provides protection from radiation. They also say that buried outside, uh, buried in respect of the natural landscape, which sounds a bit risky considering what the damage it is likely to do somewhere down the road. The other one I was telling you about is called Future Circular Colliders. Again, the same principle of generating energy and colliding protons together. Now let's, um, one of the things they think that they will, it will do, it's uh, the massive gravitational pull that it will create. So in Collider, it's comprised of 9,600 super magnets, which are 100,000 times more powerful than the gravitational pull of Earth. It fires protons, like I was saying earlier on, to collide at mind-boggling speed. The beam, is meant to rotate for up to 10 hours. No less amazing are the magnet coils which are made up of um, 36 twisted 15 millimeter strands. You can see some of them there in this shot. Um, each filament possesses a diameter as small as 7 micrometers. That's pretty small considering our 
pair and about a millimetre of just under. And the NHC um, demands some 7,600 kilometres of cable, which amounts to 2,000, sorry, 270 kilometres of um, material. Now, according to the CERN website, if you went to look, if the filaments were unraveled and they were stretched, they would be able to stretch the sun and back five times. CERN generates extreme temperatures. There may be another reason for CERN super collider being buried hundreds of feet on the ground because of the temperatures it reaches. How hot? Well, as hot as the conditions in the universe after their theory of the Big Bang, remember. Did you say theory? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah because that's what, well actually it's a hypothesis, not a theory. Well, that's a big word for me. Right, a <laughs> hypothesis means you have no proof but you have um, an idea, but you don't have a proof. Yeah. A theory is something that actually happens, but under certain circumstances. Then that theory is then proved that, then it becomes true. See the certain differences? Right. So it's their hypothesis, because they don't have no proof, because they've got a theory. Also, not to mention the cool space, the, the, the cool um, temperatures also out in outer space. And the only person who's actually complained about this is Stephen Hawking. And as a scientist, he predicts the possibility of a catastrophe if CERN continues at the atomic fast, in the atomic fast lane. As an um, astrophysicist, Neil de Gerson Tyson or Grass Tyson told Eugene Mira in, in the start uh, talk radio program that the experiment would literally cause the planet to explode. Ask yourself how much energy is keeping it together? Then you put more than the amount of energy into the object. Tyson was confident that the result will explode. In May 20, uh, 2008, when CERN was first firing up the engine in its atomic smashing machine, Otto Rosler, a German professor at the University of uh, Dubai, then filed a lawsuit against CERN with the European Court of Human Rights on the grounds that the facility would trigger a mini black hole that could get out of control and annihilate the planet. The court tossed out Rosler's request. But nevertheless, he succeeded in generating heated discussions on the possible of a dark side of the, uh, the experiment. I will mention black holes a bit later on again. So, year after third groundbreaking opening, Sergio Bolucci, the, for, the former director of the research and scientific computing of the facility, grabbed the headline when he told British tabloid, the super collider would open other worldly doors to other dimension for a very tiny lapse of time. Remember I not mentioned about opening doors. They do know what they're doing under this experiment, under this quote unquote experiment. Mere fractions of a second, he says. However, that might be enough to peer into this open door either by getting something out of it or something into it. There is a book on the market um, written by an American author. His name escapes me. And in his book, he's telling you a fictional story about a man who finds out he was Hebrew and he was of a line of error. The man happened to be a physicist who happened to work at CERN and he begins to understand the um, astrophysicist or astrophysiological system in CERN relating to the holies of holies. 
and the veil. And the veil was a type and shadow of this doorway that only one person can go through. And who's that one person? Messiah. But the priest is, is at the time was the only one who could go in once a year. So they believe, again, that they're able to do it. And using CERN, they would continue on the, that line. Of course, Ali Batali, after this tiny moment, the door would shut again, bringing us back to normal, four dimensional world. What's those four dimensions, by the way? That's one. That's the fourth one, natural fact, yeah. And actually, you get a lot of companies now doing four dimension co uh, construction. Four dimension construction means instead of you looking at, at a 2D drawing, you have 3D models, and your fourth dimension time is actually as it's constructed, you actually build it. So when you build it in your third, in your third dimension in the office, when you build it, you say, well, this will take me 20 minutes, this will take half an hour. You, so you do the fourth dimension actually in the office so that you program when the guys are outside, outside, they should be done by now. This should be in place now. We can be able to go outside and see this. That's what they're doing at the moment. So that's your fourth dimension. 4D model, yeah. That's a posh word of doing <laughs> True, yeah. And of course, there would be a risk to the stability of our world. Naturally, this comment would trigger the fears that CERN Collider will unwittingly invite unwanted visitors from the other space-time dimension. Mm. True. Anybody for dinosaurs strolling around the Champs Elysees? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah? Or the alien forms sizzling the entire planet? Such scenarios, at least for some scientists, are no longer <coughs> confined to the fictional world of Isaac As <coughs> Asimov novels or with the ongoing work of some <coughs> there is even talk of opening up a portal for time travel. I mentioned this a bit later on as well. Simply postulating such a futuristic scenario shows how far mankind has travelled in a relatively short space of time and a dystopic, well, dystopic future predicted in books such as Brave New World. And the other book, I haven't completely read, finished reading it, 1984. <laughs> yes? Already here we are. We'll then be able to control the technology he has created. And will the technology destroy his work and the entire planet? CERN's so curious choice of geological or geographical location. So, what are certain scientists really attempting to do with their large hydrogen collider? Many observers could not, but not help but notice that the town in France, where CERN is partially situated, is called Saint Jeunesse Polay. The name um, Polay comes from the Latin of Polycon, and it's believed that the Roman in Roman times, that a temple existed to honor Apollo and the people who lived there believed that it's a gateway to the underworld. It's interesting to note that CERN is built on the very same spot. <laughs> Some religious leaders are always suspicious of the aims of the scientific world and they draw a connection to a verse straight out of Revelations chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. Which gives a reference to the name of Apollo. The verse states to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit. And they had a kind over them, which was the angel of the bottomless pit. King. Was a king, yes. Whose name? But the version I got this from did not use the word there. Whose name is in the in the Hebrew Abaddon, or in the Greek tongue as his name Apollo. So would you say that scriptures is conspiracy theory? But if we look at that particular word, Abidon, in the Hebrew, destroying 
Uh, Angel, Abaddon, and Abaddon uh, refers to abstractly uh, creation or create concretely Hades destruction. Now, one of the things in front of CERN is um, a, a, a god, well, a structure. And according to Hinduism, this is the most powerful deity in Hinduism, represents death and destruction. One of the godheads of the Hindu tri trinity, known by many names, Mahavda, Mahad, Mahadeva, um, Push, and um, Push, Pati, uh, Navarara, Vishwana, Bahol, Nath, and Shiva's also the most complex of the Hindu deities. Hindu recognizes this by putting the shrine in the temple separated from other deities and worship Shiva as a phallic symbol called Shiva Lingam in most temples. Um, there is another side story to that, but I won't go into them because I've only, I have, I've only used half the time already. Shiva, to continue. Now you know, um, the Revelation is in chapter 9 11 and have a king over them, as you said, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew is Abaddon, but in the Greek. But at the bottom of this sculpture, oops, I'll go back. At the bottom of the sculpture, written here, um, it says the omnipresent, the embodiment of all virtues, the creator of this cosmic universe, the king of dances, who dances the Anada uh, Tavnava in the twilight, I salute you. And this is kept taken from one of their books by Sadi Sari Dai Sanraka. Moving on, we are mentioning about the things that were created by CERN. This is tapping into the dark matter. Astonishing is that astrophysicists' observation have demonstrated that all visibility matter accounts for only 4% of the universe. Now the race is on for CERN to find these elusive matters or phenomena responsible for dark matter, dark energy. Essentially, what CERN experiments hope to achieve is to separate, by way of atom smasher, smasher, the dark matter which will be, which has been distributed as the very glue that holds together from visibility. There's just one problem with the experiment: nobody has any idea what the consequences will be if the goal is achieved. So once again, this dark versus visible paradigm has generated a, a battle that transcend, transcends the scientific world, becoming a question involving physiology, physiology and spirituality. CERN, the logo. So what can you see in CERN, the logo? Three sixes, yes. I'll leave it up to your imagination, what do you think that is? <laughs> Not to mention the human Ujimanta conspiracy that's opting for the particular logo they design. CERN also could be similar or connecting to Saronos. Now Saronos, yes, Saronos, the horned one. Sonnenus is the controversial name given to the Celtic studies to depiction of a horn god of the Catholic Polytheism. Sonnenus is a Celtic god of fertility, life, animal, wealth, and the underworld. The name itself only tested, attested once in the first century as a pillar of boatmen. But he appears all over Gaul. And where is Gaul? France. 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 Correct. Thank you very much. And among the um, Celtabrians, where is the Celtic Celtabrians? I do want Thailand. Yes. 
Well done. So we can see the trouble where we came from, from France, over actually through Scotland into Ireland, but, and we see that's why you don't see the Scots and the Irish don't get on, because that again is a family war. So, Sonoros is depicted with antlers of a stag and sometimes carries a purse filled with coin and often seated cross-legged and often associated with animals holding or wearing torques are uh, known over 50 examples. So there's the snake in sand, cross-legged. Then we go on to the deity of destruction, which is located in front of CERN. Although most corporations shun any connection with religion and the spiritual world, CERN has chosen the mascot, a Hindu goddess, as I mentioned before. But not only just any Hindu goddess, but this particular one, Shiva, the goddess of destruction. So what is the aim of the company? Now presently, CERN is ramping up the largest um, atom collider in the world, and they're ramping up, and they reckon that for their next atomic collision, this is scheduled to take place next month. That's what they intend to do. Now, they intend to um, take it up to... Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm going to to worry. I'll tell you the reason why it's because I've got that running. They intend to take it up to one tera electron volts. That's the limit. Years ago, they had it down at one. Uh, sorry, they're going to bring it up to one picker electron volts, and they take they previously started at one tera electron volts. And obviously, the tera one is only a tenth the size of the pick of one, right? Was it a thousand? Three zeros. It's a thousand. Okay. And so that's how much energy they intend to, do. and that's the, they've done the calculation, that's what they reckon that they're able to open that portal, that doorway, so that they can see, so they say, what's it on the other side of the veil, and hopefully nothing went well. Something will more than likely come through. I don't see that it's not going to not come through, but I reckon something will come through. So the greatest fear concerning you know, the LHC is the black hole, mini black holes, descending in the centre of the Earth and devouring from the inside. However, black holes are a theoretical construct, but, a rec but recently, on the 11th um, of February, the LIGO collaboration announced the first observation of gravitational waves because these waves were generated from the black hole, a black hole merger. It was the first ever detected of a binary black hole. We can find this in the, um, this black hole information here on Wikipedia. And the second one. So then, it's nothing new under the sun. As far as Scripture would say, no, it's not the it. Scripture not the That's not happening. There you are. Thank you very much for saving. That's never happened before, but there you are. These things are sent to test us. Moving on, the atomic matter um, weapons. Now, not only can it be measured, it's also been created uh, contained in the LHC, although it's very small in quantities and uh, for short periods of time according to CERN. Antimatter has enormous explosive potential. A quarter of a gram of antimatter can produce enough explosive to yield five kilotons of TNT. If CERN develops the capability to create and store significant amount of antimatter and some claim have already done so. This highly destructive antimatter weapon will be developed, and the advantage with antimatter is that it would not produce radiation. 
Moving on to the particle beam weapons. A direct beam of high energy subatomic uh, particles moving at extreme velocity, such as the one produced by the LHC, is capable of obliterating matter at nuclear level, sorry, molecular level. Particle beam weapons are already on the battlefield, especially in black ops warfare, and the research at CERN will certainly expand and refine their military application. I mentioned black holes. It's to do with time distortion. Let me try and explain the theory on the wormholes. We've got to travel from Birmingham to London. Distance, 110 miles. But we're late for a meeting. We'd like to be there on time. The whole idea is if I can move quick enough I can get there before the meeting. I'm already 10, I'm already, I've only got about 10 minutes to get there. But if I've twisted time enough, in this loop here, as it travels around, if I twist time enough, I can enter here and be there. That's the principle of time. By twisting it like a piece of paper on itself, you can actually go to another location and actually this movement literally is zero. That's what they're thinking of. Twisting time, bending time. So in a natural way, they are trying to actually twist it enough that they go ahead of themselves and affect history so that you know, have you heard of the um, Mandela effect? <laughs> you already heard about the Mandela effect. <laughs> yeah. Yes. What Hollywood did with those, was it two or three or four films? Which ones are those? <laughs> the one? Terminator. Not Terminator. No, 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 Terminator. No, 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 where with DiCaprio with. Was he when the. That's the thinking behind that one. For the counter cities. Oh, sure. 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 Oh, no, not that. No, no, no. no, no. It, it's, it's more sophisticated than that. It's where the guys have more black coats and sunglasses on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was the principle of this. That was the principle that of that. That was done from Hollywood's perspective. Yes, yeah. That was done, that's, well, he was referring to the, um, the Matrix, and in the Matrix you're supposed to enter in, and the old idea is that you are supposed to go back in time, and that affects what happens. Now, your recent one, it's called Timeless. It's on channel four. When you get home, and you've, if you've got these view boxes, I don't have one of them, and view boxes in four, you can get one of the episodes, and what it is, you're here in 2017, I can't remember what age they're in, and they've got this, and it's quite interesting, they've got this time machine that looks like the eye, and <laughs> You enter into it, well there's only three occupants, three, enter into it, you go back in time, because this other gentleman uh, got the, not the prototype, because they have to use the prototype because he stole the, 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 the up-to-date one, he's gone back in time because he wants to get rid of a particular family. Now this is the family war this is. He's trying to get rid of this particular family because they killed his wife. So he's trying to go back to kill the family so that his wife, his loving wife, who he loves so much, doesn't die. Yes, you can go, when you get a chance to see it, I unwatched it, yes. Well, I would say most of sci-fi channel all talks about it. You can go on Flash, you can go to all of the series on the sci-fi channel now, dealing with this, and yeah. they're actually telling us something. So if you watch sci-fi channel, 
sort of this It is about time. time. Yes, all the time. Charlie, this is probably the worst one. Can I go deep into this? Yes. Oh no. I, I, I guess it's right. We have to ask the question: Why are we being shown all this today? Preparing us. Yeah. Question. Preparing us, but a lot of these concepts come from Satan. Christ. Yeah. Of course, it's all the way we guide humans into believing that when, as the Revelation says, when he appears as, as a God imitating the Messiah, that he will come and everybody will just follow to him. That's right. It's, it's back to the God of Eden. Father gave us our dimension, our ground. Yes. But Satan is like, what did you know that you could actually do this yes. and have this and partake of this? Mm. And we've already done enough. This is our ground. Mm -hmm. We were meant to go back and forth to heaven or the one of the other 11 dimensions that NASA say exists. So this again is Satan just showing you what knowing not that you are that. Yes. Really. And, you know, yeah. we're not meant to be doing this. Yes, we're not meant to be doing this. We're so not probably keep up the time this time, I suppose. <laughs> but it's all part of Satan's objective is to get us to doubt. God. Yes, it is. And yeah. that's why I find it interesting, Job chapter 1, where it says, sons of other worlds. Yes, it does. And the first thing I found is, they don't need to come here, because we are the television screen for them to watch and see that this issue called sin is a problem. Yes. So why would sinners want to come to the sinful? Yeah, disobedience is a problem. Sorry, <laughs> yes. Uh, I didn't want to step off track, but when we say we're not supposed to, I think about, is it Peach or somebody that was translated? Somewhere immediately, I forgot who it was. There was some, one of the disciples. Yeah. That, uh, but where was he? What dimension did he go to? He stayed in the same dimension. No, so, yeah, but what I'm trying to say, he had to use some. So, what I'm trying to say, I think it's the perversion of stuff that's going on here. Did Father say, because I think, even though he said he stayed, he still used that kind of principle. Yes. It was done through Father. I, whereas this is done on a equal level. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
next floor that's in front, please. Thank you. Um, with everything that's been said and putting it all together, um, just to add to it all, I'm seeing that um, with, as I think Gary mentioned being in the Garden of Eden and how there were um, that there was that dis deceiving, and in that deceiving, there's nothing new under the sun, and here we are again today um, being deceived, and, and I see all of this to be um, that. The enemy speaking, as someone said earlier, um, trying to deceive us again to say, look at all this, um, I can give you this. So basically it's like they're trying to overtake the Father, knowing that we, the children of Israel, are looking forward to the coming of the Father. They are telling us, look, um, we can skip that, we can jump from this time to that time. So if you're expecting to come now, 2017, we'll skip that, we'll, we'll go further and he won't come. We, we are God and we can, we control. So basically it's like trying to, to um, hoodwink us, as Stuart would say, um, into thinking that um, what they're saying and doing is going to, is going to really take place, but it, it can't because there, there is a God and He has a plan and His plan is perfect. I think that when you consider the Tower of Babel, yeah. why Yehovah has to come back and have to stop something. Yeah. And it's all about mankind coming together and sharing their knowledge and they were doing, they were trying to ascend into heaven. This is what they were doing back in the day when all the languages were confused. Before the languages were confused. This is what Nimrod was doing. Yeah, before the languages were confused. They, and, and Nimrod is a polyon. He is the same, one and the same thing. They're trying to remake what has already gone before. Mm -hmm. And the World Wide Web came out of this. Yes, sir. Which is www666 again. Yes. That the whole purpose of the internet was to pull the knowledge so that they could create this. Yeah. Bring all the experts of the world so that they could um, rebuild the Tower of Babel. Yeah. I mean, I remember doing a sermon about 30 something years ago now, preaching about how, uh, how is Satan going to deceive the world? And at the time of Star Trek, everybody was going mad over Star Trek. Yeah. So I said, I could see the spaceship come out of space now. And land on this earth, and who's going to walk out? But Satan's the glory of light. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And people are so gullible, they just dive into it. Mm -hmm. And this is what's frightening. And this is why, to be honest, doing a program like this is important. I'm going to deal with health, but I'm also going to deal with Muslimism, because a lot of so called, forgive me, Christians don't know exactly how it started, who started, etc. And you think to yourself, we're being hoodwinked in not knowing the truth. Yes. I'm going to deal with drug companies today. Who owns the drug companies? Yes. Who runs the banks? Yes. You go through the whole conglomerate. Yes. We call it stocks and shares. Yes. So it's all part of the deception of Satan to be able to control the world. Revelation doesn't talk about prime ministers and presidents. It talks about princes. Yes. And we need to know who the princes are. So I'm going to go into that. Yes. And you think to yourself, really? We are so naive, it's actually frightening. Yeah, it is, yeah. You better finish, bro. Yeah. <laughs> as, as, as my wife likes to say, <laughs> as my wife would say, it's a, we perish with a lack of knowledge. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and so, um, so then we, now there's next one which is called um, Vortex, because this one's obviously a wormhole. And the Vortex is basically, um, a short connection between two different dimensions or parallel universe. And the plural for vortex is vortices. Um, DNA sequencing and artificial um, synthesis since it's a fact that the um, synchronized, a synchron non-tron collider at Berkeley in um, Walnut Creek in California, actually it's adjacent to Walnut Creek in California, 
and has used to help sequence human DNA for human genome project. It is certainly feasible that the LHC could also be employed in a similar way but with more precise results. There is enough evidence to suggest that the artificial human or human hybrid genomes have already been synthesized at the Collider facilities, including CERN. And if those of you who remember, I mentioned about uh, mixing and splicing and the next and the projects there, which was um, it's scary if you keep a track of these things. Stringlets, if you've ever heard of stringlets, this is produced, uh, produced by quark gl gluton plasma soup, sometimes generated at high energy particle collisions. Stringlets are the most explosive substance in the known universe, and according to the theolo theological uh, uh, physicists, were responsible for the explosion at the so-called Big Bang. Contrary to popular belief, the stringlets are not theoretical, but have been confirmed to exist in the Brookhaven National Lab located at Long Island, New York, where physicists working on um, relatively uh, heavy ion collider, or RHIC, are attempting not only to produce stringlets, but to contain them. The potential gains of this endeavor of the military industrial complex are self-evident because the LHC is much higher, as much higher energy than um, the RHIC spring of production and containment is even more feasible. Oh, okay. Anyway, Psalms chapter 2, verse 1. Why did the heathen raise and the people imagine a vain thing? And the kings of the earth set themselves to the rulers take counsel together against Yahuwah and against his anointed. Who is his anointed? We are. Because we're the ones who are anointed. Although, yes, I agree, the Mashiach, but his, and his eventual fight is with the Mashiach, but we are the anointed. Because through us, because he has to convince us that he's wrong. So, that points to us. Let us, and this is what they're saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. And he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Yahweh shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Yahweh. Of Zion. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Wherever their thrones, dominion, principality, and powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and all things consist. And the other one, last one, which basically mirrors that, is in John 1 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Elohim, and the Word was Elohim. And verse 14 finishes up, and the Word was made flesh, and, made, and dwelt among us. John is talking about them at that time. And we beheld his glory, and the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. So that's the enemy's plan, roughly. You can see the connection it makes to dark matter, time travel, gene manipulation, DNA, and that's their agenda. And we can be fooled by it. What we need to be aware of is that the enemy is out there with his agenda. And prayerfully we can understand and avoid this. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments? Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Well, there was a question here. No question. Is, is there any way that they could open a portal and not be able to close it? 
money of colored asset. Now I can't see colored asset. Why would we need that? But if it is, it's only in our dimension. Because we're not allowed. Because if you remember, when it talks about the Messiah coming a third time, that's what the Bible talks about. We never talk about a third time. But when it comes a third time, after the thousand years, that literally this whole Milky Way that we know is destroyed and remade anew with this uh, being the capital of the galaxy. I'm, I'm just interested in the fact that. Ask the man to that just one time, please. Thank you. I want to catch it on that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm just interested in the fact that Hazatan is thrown into a bottomless pit uh, for a thousand years. That's where he resides until he's released. And it seems to me as if this is the very place that he will be thrown into. Mm. It's, it's, it's something that's opened and it's something that Abaddon comes out of. And I believe that this is the point where Satan will be cast into for a thousand years during the millennial reign from which he will be released later on. This is my perspective on this. Whenever I've heard that, um, heard that sir, it seems to me it's like this endless bottomless pit that yeah. I, I think it's fairly relevant to... Um, we, we, we don't currently have anything like that on planet Earth, do we? No. Well, we're building. To, to make a comment on what you said, um, my view is is that the Father will permit it to happen. That something does come through because if He does not permit a lot of destruction, because remember, we have to lose a large quantity of human beings on this earth. Thank you, brother. Brother, you said two thirds. Right, so we have to lose a lot of people, and that accounts to how many millions? Thank you. We're talking about four, four and a half, five billion, four and a half, five billion. And that's the numbers now. Yeah. Right, and so, yes, my opinion is that something must be permitted, but what it is, I have the faintest idea. We will obviously, in hindsight, go, yeah, that's obvious. Sorry, someone over here? No? No, okay, yeah. Sorry, what's that name? My friend. I've got the mic here, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask a question. Does the, can the enemy create? Good question. Because the way I asked that question, can he create as in how the father creates, or does he manipulate? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who was first? I was looking at that. I can't remember because the boiler is I don't believe the enemy can create the enemies of being. You know, everything is it's, it's originally the father, the enemy copies. So therefore, the, I mean, Satan is created. Yeah, he is created. Exactly. It's the whole and he will only be able to do what the father So, do, so he has now. nothing original, nothing. So the main reason I ask that question then is when we look at this thing, it means that Father created everything we talk about. All the enemies done is perverted it. Yeah. yeah. The Father made everything good. Yeah. But then I don't want to go into the deep one, sorry. I was going to say there's a caveat to that in that the, the enemy is called the author in the Bible. So even though the author isn't the creator, he does begin things such as lying, such as uh, confusion and, and the like. So while he's not a creator of beings, he is the creator of um, negativity. I think let's not be afraid to call him the creator because we are all created in Father's image. Yeah. Now none of us have ever seen Father create a large Hadron Collider. But yet, because our nature is matching his, we have created a large hydro collider, having never seen one from him. So because we're in his image, how much more has Satan? Okay? So he's able to create things. 
and, and give inspiration to mankind to make things that we've never seen before. So because he too is in the image, do not be surprised, as he, as my sister said, author and father of life. So he's able to create. And I will just warn everyone in this room that the, he was able to recreate in Egypt the first three signs that Moses did. It got to a point where he couldn't do it, but he was able to do water, um, blood from water and his snakes and uh, I believe it was also frogs as well. He was able to reproduce these things. Yeah, this was undeniable. The Bible doesn't say this was just a fake thing because if, if you watch all the films, um, they, they you know, close the windows and do a few magic tricks, but it's actually what they did. They were able through occultic power to recreate the first three plagues. And this is what's going to be repeated in the end times. So you've got to be very careful when you say that Satan can't do something. You don't know, and I don't know, what he's capable of. Yeah. Um, can you start yes. can you in line with the questions, please, with the, with the subject matter? Because it's easy for us to get into some real juicy stuff that's going off. Very easy. We might even get heard by it. Makes it, more yeah. interesting. it does make it very interesting. I, I don't want to limit, but I do want to try to keep us on time for two other speakers to go here. Yeah. No, I quite agree that there's, uh, the evil one has got a lot of um, power. Um, my view is that um, prior to disobedience, Adam had or was able to see a lot more than we currently can see because of disobedience, because we chose the knowledge of good and evil as opposed to the tree of life. That was the option there in the garden. It wasn't that you didn't have the tree of life. The tree of life was always there, but we were told, don't touch that tree. And with the alluring words of the evil one, we went for the tree instead of saying, and I don't blame Eve, I blame, I, I blame Adam, because he had the power. And we see this in scriptures, if you understand Torah, Torah says that the husband or the man in the house has the ability to decline the woman's request. If he, and because I, in my opinion that is, I think he knew all things, or a lot of things, he could have said, Sorry, darling. I know it's good, and it might look good, you ain't having it, forget it. And he would have covered her, and when the father was walking through, or the ruach who came through the garden, he would have been able to still confront the Most High and say, well, um, you may have seen that, but I told him no. Interesting point. But that's how I view it. Yeah, that's I think you're actually right. You've got to look at the psychology of it all. First of all, here's the most beautiful woman in the world. The only one. He was smitten by her. She came along, repeating what Satan already said, you won't surely die today, etc. What is crazy, it wasn't until Adam partook of the fruit that they then saw their nakedness. Because when Eve partook of the fruit, she didn't see the nakedness. It was when Adam, so you're quite right, the responsibility is put on man, not on woman. And that's why the whole of the Bible talks about, contrary to gay lesbian rights today, where women are equal, neither of us are equal, neither of us are unequal. Because we're both unique. That's how God made us. And the problem is, society, Satan, distort, distorts the truth. I was listening a few years ago now, I never forgot it, where this uh, guy had actually been studying plants. And he came out with what I hadn't thought about. Because of sin, Adam and Eve were able to listen to the plants, the flowers, not just smell them, but hear them. But because of sin, we've lost that ability because we partook of the fruit. And on the issue that was brought up earlier on, one of the reasons, or the major reason, why Adam and Eve were kicked out, literally, with, with the angel with the fiery sword, was purely to stop them eating of the tree of life. 
Because you can imagine they're eating that tree of life in their sin. That poses a completely different scenario again. So it's interesting how things progress. But that's why I'm glad we have a creator who knows everything from the beginning to the very end.